Fuzzy TV. Who was the fifth Beatle? Yeah, that's the question we're going to start out this week with. It's a very spiritual question, very serious spiritual consideration. Um, George Martin is one guess. Well, that's a good guess. I mean, it could be George Martin. He was the Beatles producer. He actually played on In My Life, uh, John Lennon's song. He played the harpsichord. And uh, he was a great contributor to their music. Uh, Billy Preston, that's another good guess. Billy Preston played keyboards on Get Back. And he was on the rooftop concert there. If you watch that footage, you see Billy Preston. Great musician. Love that guy. He could be considered the fifth Beatle. That's true. But that's not who I'm thinking of. Before I tell you who I'm thinking of, let me introduce myself. I am the one and only Martin Zender. There is no second, third, fourth, or fifth. I'm broadcasting to you today and every day. No, not every day. That's not true. From Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And uh, I'm thrilled to be with you today. Um, I consider the fifth Beatle to be Jimmy Nickel. I'm bringing this up because this guy, well... Let me explain to you. Jimmy Nickel, he substituted, if you can believe this, for Ringo Starr. I think it was in 64. The end of 64? Could have been the beginning of 65. Uh, the Beatles' world tour. Uh, Ringo came down with tonsillitis. Oh, me throat hurts. Me throat's killing me. I'm not going to be able to go to Australia, don't you know? So they put him in the hospital, and they everything was set up. They had uh, all the hotels. They had the tickets sold. They had to do it. George didn't want to do it. We're not going without Ringo. Oh, but they did. Yes, they did. And they hired a guy called Jimmy Nickel. And he tried. He was a Beatle. He was, see, he was an actual Beatle. You can't say that about George Martin. Or you can't say that about Billy Preston. I'm sorry. You can't. So he travels with them on this world tour. And the Beatles, are, this is the heyday of their, of their popularity. Beatlemania is in full swing. So this guy, he said later it was the worst experience of his life the best slash worst because he said i went from a nobody i went from a guy that couldn't even talk to a girl girls didn't want anything to do with me now all of a sudden i'm a god uh women just want to touch me i'm traveling all over the world i'm one of the most popular guys on the planet and the, one of the saddest photos i bring this up for a reason one of the saddest photos is a photo of Jimmy Nickel at the Adelaide Airport, Australia. Ringo's back. I'm feeling better. Thank you very much. Uh, and he's at the airport by himself. They drive him to the airport. Bye, Jimmy. Thanks for being a Beatle for two weeks. I think he did 10 gigs. No, not even two weeks. He's all alone. All of a sudden, he said, I went from being a megastar to an, back to absolute nobody. He said it was murder. Ruined his life. Never could get anything back after that. I mean, as far as getting something gone. I think of our Apostle Paul going to the third heaven, right? Going to the third heaven. Jimmy Nickel was in heaven. And uh, relatively speaking, he was a beetle for freaking a week and a half. And he goes from that to being a nobody. Here's Paul going to the third heaven, seeing probably the body of Christ completed, seeing the glory that would be his at the snatching away of the body of Christ, having to come back to this stinko world, though, and trying to survive after that. He was so elevated, lifted up by the, by the trip <laughs> to the third heaven that God had to give him a thorn in the flesh to humble him. So I, it would be much better to be Paul than Jimmy Nickel, actually, yeah. Jimmy Nickel would be much better to be Paul. Now, going back to the first century, I've been talking about the two Gospels. The gospel given to Abraham, the gospel given to Paul. Those are the two guys that got it raw from heaven. God gave it to Abraham, going to make a great people out of your seed. All the chillins that come from your loins, they're going to be called Israelites. You'll see. Wait for it. And I'm going to make them a great nation. I'm going to make them the head of all the nations. And eventually, they're going to rule the world for a thousand years. going to be great. Hang in there for that. 
So Jesus came in the flesh as an Israelite to confirm those promises. Uh Aha, but Jesus was here for another reason. He was here to save the world. Nobody knew that. To save the sins of, to take away the sins of everybody, not just Israelites, and to reconcile the universe back to God because not only are the people of earth estranged from God, but the celestial world is estranged from God also. So that message was given to a radical killer a killer pharisee named saul who was actually out to destroy the followers of jesus christ but jesus christ said, i want that guy as my spokesman to a new gospel that includes not just israelites but the whole entire world and um the reconciliation of the heavens to god not just the earth great message so there was a time when both of these gospels were operating at the same time and my contention to you is it's still that time. They're still operating at the same time. But one is like on hold. That's the Israel gospel. It's on hold right now. The other one, Paul's gospel, the radical Pharisee guy, Saul, whose name was changed to Paul, that's on the front burner. And we're all like, yes, into that. But the other one, people can still believe it. Some people don't agree with me. If you can believe that, some people don't agree with me. They say, no, no, no. The Israel gospel can't be believed today. I say it can. It's still in the Bible. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John hasn't disappeared. Hebrews has not disappeared. The book of James, John has not disappeared. All these writers write about the Abraham gospel, otherwise known as the gospel of the circumcision. Don't ask me why it's called the circumcision right now. I don't have time to get into it. You really got to know. Oh, God, so awkward. Well... God told Abraham that a bunch of people were going to come from him. So this was, this means that the guy had to have sexual intercourse with his wife. I'm sorry, but that's how it happens. And then, see, he didn't want him to be proud of the flesh, like, <laughs> point down at his uh, favorite male reproduction organ and say, you see this? All these people came from this here thing there. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> No, God said not going to do that. So I'm going to do this little this little rite, this little uh, surgical procedure. Gonna gonna like uh, gonna like cut the end of that thing off, so you'll be humiliated. Yeah, so you won't point to it anymore because you'll be embarrassed. Because oh oh, ouchie. See, it was supposed to humiliate an Israelite to be circumcised. It was supposed to remind them, just when they started to feel proud about that's right, that's right. Yeah, we have lots of babies. Then they're supposed to look down and go, oh, yeah, uh, I forgot, yeah. This is God's operation, not mine. See, operation, see how that works? Uh-huh. But no, the Israelites became proud of it. I'm circumcised. They got the whole wrong idea. It was supposed to be, I'm circumcised. Oh, God, I'm sorry. It's not me. It's God. God did it. But instead, they all bragged about it. It was ridiculous. But that's an Israelite for you. Pretty, 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 pretty ridiculous. So anyway, um... The reason I think it's important to understand that um, both Gospels are, can still be believed today is because I know lots of people, you probably know lots of people, who embrace, who love the Gospel God gave to Abraham. They read Paul, they read about, uh, they read about justification, they read about um, conciliation, God's at peace with the world, they read about grace, they read about uh, the happiness that comes from having all your sins gone, and they hate that message. Yeah, can you believe anybody could hate that message? Yes, some people do. Why? Well, number one, they're nuts. Actually, no. See, that's what you would think. That's what you would think, that, that they're nuts because there's no other gospel today. It's only Paul's gospel. Abraham's gospel is waiting. You see, it's going to come back. It's going to come back when the body of Christ, that's us, we believe in Paul's gospel, when Christ came comes to extricate us out of this present wicked eon, then he will... He will formally and officially take Israel back. Now she's kind of, you know, kind of like not his people. But they're still out there, the Israelites are. They still have a message to believe that he's going to take up with them. But in the meantime, what are they supposed to do? Well, the book of Hebrews was written to them to tell them what to do. Well, that thing's on hold. Sorry. Black Betty had a child. Bam, lamb. The damn thing went wild. Bam, lamb. So you're just going to have to wait a little bit. In the meantime, I'm doing something new with the nations. You might not like it. 
but hold fast to the promises. Hold fast. Hebrews is all about holding fast to the promises. So now there are some people who would look at these people today who still love the Israel gospel. They love the law. They love James. They love the Ten Commandments. They love stone. They love condemnation and death. They love this stuff, you know, and so they're still into it. They don't like Paul. They don't get Paul. Paul's like a foreign language to them. So we would call, some people would call those people idiots. I see, I would not, but some people say, well, you people are just ignorant. You really are in the body of Christ. I don't care how much you hate Paul. I don't care how much you love James, John, Jude, the book of Revelation, the book of Hebrews, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You're still in the body of Christ, so shut up. You're just an ignorant Paul person. I say no. I say that these people are legitimately embracing their own gospel, the circumcision gospel. Yeah. Yes, women can embrace it too. They're just they just don't have that issue with it. Yeah, they don't have that issue. Lucky them. So No, yes. I mean, yes. A person of the nations can be come like an Israelite. They call them proselytes. They can they can grasp onto that gospel. They're not, no, they're not actual Israelites, but they, they call them proselytes. There was one of them where Acts chapter 10, I forget, is it 10 or 12? Cornelius was a man of the nations, and he associated himself with Israel. He attached himself to Israel. He said, I think Israel's so great. This is, this is Cornelius. This is what he sounded like. Israel's so great. I know I ain't no Israelite. I know that, but I still want to be associated with these people because I love everything having to do with Israel. So I'm gonna like I'm just gonna kind of like attach myself to them. I know I'm a second-class citizen. I know I'm not of the native people, but nevertheless, I want to be associated with them. So they accepted these people as long as they realized their place. So a person of the nations can grasp onto Israel and be associated with that message, and it's happening today. So I say. The people who can't get over the law, they love it. They just love it. Let them have their gospel. They are believers in the Israel gospel. They're not in the body of Christ. They're legitimately embracing their gospel today. And why would this be so strange? Because back in the first century, Peter and Paul were both sitting at the same picnic table at Antioch. They were contemporaries, obviously. And both gospels were existent then you got to remember before paul was called there was only one way to know about the true god and that was through the god of abraham isaac and jacob the god of israel and the only details you knew about him was through the circumcision gospel god gave to abraham that was the only way that was the only news about god if there's only one restaurant in town nobody argues about which restaurant to go to you ever have those arguments? You're going to go out with your friends. Well, where should we go? I want pizza. I want tacos. Whatever. Everybody's arguing. I want chicken. I want barbecued ribs. There's 20 different restaurants in town. Everybody argues. If there's only one restaurant in town, there's no problem. Nobody argues. For a while, there was only one gospel in town and one gospel only. It was the gospel of Abraham given by Jesus Christ to Peter. He was the caretaker, Peter and Paul. Why Peter and Paul? They were the two guys that became representative of these of these uh, various gospels, they were the um, they were the spokespeople for them. Peter for the circumcision, Paul for the uncircumcision. If you don't know what I'm talking about by this time, <laughs> if you're still with me, go to Galatians two seven. It explains everything. Peter and Paul. So, but now with the calling of Paul, now there's a complication. Yeah, now there's two. So it screwed everything up in a way. But now there's another gospel in town, and it's Paul. So now it's a little bit confusing because Peter, for instance, he knew about Paul's gospel. Paul told him about it. It's not the same one because Paul had to explain it to him. I think it's Acts chapter 14. No, no, no. After 14, I had that number 14 in my head. After 14 years of teaching his gospel among the nations, not to Israelites, among non-Israelites, that's one, that's the keynote of the uncircumcision evangel. It's called that just because you don't have to have the end of your favorite reproductant, reproductive organ snipped off. That's why it's called uncircumcision. It's kind of like a figure of speech known as retention. When you retain the original name, I mean, you just add that un in front of it. Like, uh, what's the best thing about this gospel, Martin? Well, you don't have the end of your penis snipped off. That's one of the first great things about it yeah so that's that 
Uh, so both Gospels existed. So Peter, however, he knew about Paul's Gospel. Yeah, that is interesting. This name's Peter, and it has to do with their circumcision. Yeah, that's true. So he didn't, he knew Paul's Gospel. He didn't embrace it. He gave it acknowledgement. Yeah, this is legitimate, but he didn't go for it. He stayed with his. Now, Saul, who became Paul, he was also part of the Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob gospel, the Peter gospel, because that's the only one that was in town. But now there's a new one, and he was the first member of it, see? So he's an Israelite, but he jumped off the Israelite boat and went to this new, this new gospel. And in this new gospel, there's neither Jew nor Greek. So this was going on in the first century. Sounds confusing, but it's just like it was... That's the way it was. And I contend to you today, on this Monday, it's the same today. Both Gospels still exist today. Why would that be a strange thing? That's the way it was in the first century. Both Gospels existed. You have to admit that. Peter was camped onto his. Paul was camped onto his. Some people gathered to Peter's Gospel, some to Paul's. Some Israelites even went to Paul's, but mostly it was the nations, non-Israelites. They heard this message. You don't have to be circumcised, no baptism, no law, no nothing. You just have to sit around and be thankful that God did all this for you. All your sins are forgiven. And now you're not going to be on earth. You're going to be taken to heaven, and you're going to reconcile the heavens to God. It's a great thing. Yeah, we love it. We love it. Where do we sign up, Paul? Paul says, you don't have to sign up. God designates you beforehand. You're a member of the body of Christ, right? Some Israelites heard this. Obviously, they hated it. They were jealous. They didn't like the fact that non-Israelites were getting this message. We're getting a new message that was actually, in a lot of ways, better than theirs. Imagine you're an Israelite, and you have to go through the whole temple ritual. You have to bring your lamb to Jerusalem um, on the Passover. You have to go to Jerusalem three times a year, celebrate the feast, do the law. You have to do all these things. And now you're straining, you're straining, you're barely making it. Your sins are forgiven once a year. Like you just get by by the skin of your teeth. And then you hear that there's a new message going to these dogs, these pigs. Ho ho. Yeah. Israelites were not too fond of non Israelites. They were kind of racist. Oh, yes, they were. They were very racist. Well, God was racist too because he favored one nation for a long time. Thousands of years favored one nation. Uh, yeah, hundreds. So you're hearing that now these Greeks, these heathen, these dogs, these pigs are getting a message that they don't have to do nothing. That really ticked them off. So there was some stress there. There was some drama. And there's stress and drama today. Now, and I'm going to... Uh, tomorrow I'm going to deal with a verse from Galatians 1, 6, where Paul talks about there's another gospel. But he's not talking about the circumcision gospel. He's talking about a false gospel. Don't be confused. I shouldn't even mention that. I'm going to get into it tomorrow. You cannot miss tomorrow's show. And then I'm going to share with you a story. It's a story. Gather around, children. It's story time with Martin Zender. No, it's not a story. It's an actual thing that happened to me in Detroit, Michigan in 1995, I think it was. Could have been 96. Part of my world tour. And something amazing happened at a church. Yeah, I was actually teaching at a church, if you can believe that. Don't worry, I eventually got kicked out. I got kicked out of this church. It has to do with the two Gospels. And I'm going to tell you what happened at that church in Detroit tell you that tomorrow it was first century drama this is one way i know that both gospels and there's only two except there's this false one paul actually mentions it in galatians gonna get into that you gotta watch tomorrow you're gonna hear my great story martin zender story hour tomorrow you don't want to miss it on tuesday until then if you have friends or family members who don't get paul they don't understand a word of it they think you're crazy for believing this thing they wish paul was just ripped out of the bible just take his 13 letters and rip them out because they they clash with everything we love about the law with everything we love about rocks and stones and sheep yeah and, and the temple service don't worry about it it could be, and I think it is. Your friends are legitimately 
and honestly gravitating toward the gospel that turns them on, towards the gospel that they're meant for. They're either actual Israelites from way back, who knows, trace their genealogy, they might go back to Israel, or they're proselytes like Cornelius, and they're kind of hangers on, they're hanging on to the train of Israel, they love all things Israel. Maybe they're not so stupid after all, maybe, maybe. And I think the answer is yes, definitely. They are embracing, legitimately embracing, the ancient gospel. And for them, their desire, their deepest desire will be fulfilled. In the meantime, you and me, we're the heck out of here at the snatching away of the body of Christ.